All right, so let's start. Can you see the slides? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm very audible. Yeah, it's clear. All right, so we are going to look at uh, negotiation. Uh, this is following our discussion that we had yesterday on uh, conflict resolution. So negotiation is one of the ways of resolving conflicts. But also we use uh, negotiation in, in a number of ways in public health. So today we are going to look at what this negotiation is, um, what strategies can you employ? And then the whole negotiation process, what do you need to, to know about this process? How can you prepare for each of the steps of the uh, negotiation process? You should also be able to know the, 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 the needs and the different interests of the, the, the negotiating parties, okay? And then we we'll also look at aspects to do with uh, the communication skills that are very pertinent in, um, in negotiation. So we'll look at issues like uh, active listening, empathy, and how do you handle difficult situations, including when you have uh, an emotionally charged discussion or negotiation going on. Okay, so negotiation is basically a process whereby you have two, two parties or more um, interacting to, together to accomplish mutually beneficial objectives while meeting the individual goals that may be in the conflict, okay? So the key concepts here are that uh, you have two parties, first of all. So in our explanation, we are going to use the analogy that you have two parties. Uh, but you also understand that in public health, you don't necessarily have to have only two parties. So you can have negotiations where you have multiple parties. That is to say that uh, there are many groups that are interested in the issue that is being dis uh, discussed or negotiated on. So you have, you have parties, these parties have different interests. So you are basically uh, exchanging information or interacting to make sure that you have uh, a solution to the situation such like that both, both parties uh, all, all the parties involved uh, achieve their objectives, okay? So this is basically about finding mutually acceptable solutions to conflict, to complex conflicts uh, or to complex conflicting situations, okay? Uh, that is what negotiation is. So in public health, um, we have these problems that uh, you have many people interested in solving them. So if public health problems are uh, often solved through uh, multiple stakeholders. So these stakeholders have their own interests, uh, needs and priorities. So that means that uh, as a public health professional, you should be having the skills and competences to be able to navigate these multiple stakeholders such that you have a mutually agreed goal. So that is why negotiation in public health is very, very vital. And then the other point is that in, in, in public health, we are always faced with the problem of scarcity of resources. And therefore, we often act as advocates to make sure that those who apportion resources, apportion resources to programs that can have maximum impact on population health outcomes. So that means that you really need to, to negotiate 
with them so that they can give you the funding, equipment, or even the personnel that you can uh, uh, use in order to, uh, to improve population health outcomes. Okay, so negotiating for grants, negotiating for funding, uh, negotiating for more staff, if you're running a project, all this requires negotiation skills. And then, of course, we have been looking at the, uh, the concept of policy making in public health or health policy making. And uh, you realize that you have what we call um, interest groups. Okay. Uh, you have policy entrepreneurs. You have policy makers. You have all these actors who basically have interest. Uh, in a particular health problem. So therefore, if you are to really uh, influence policy making, you need to have the negotiation skills with these people, such that uh, uh, policies that are favorable can actually be enacted. And then, um, because of the fact that we work with the communities, you also, will encounter uh, resistance or disagreements with either community members about public health interventions. It could be uh, about vaccination campaigns when the, the, the community is actually hesitant uh, or there are, there are areas of disagreement on, on how this will be done. Or areas of, on, of disagreement on, on how, for example, mosquito nets will be distributed. And a number of things, um, or even disagreements about um, family planning programs. We have a community saying, we don't want these programs. This is very common. So how do you um, sensitize, educate, and negotiate with community members to be we escalate the tension and make sure that uh, you don't have conflicts in implementing these projects because you really want these community members. You need them uh, to support uh, the public health interventions. And then collaboration, okay? You work with other partners. They could be national or international NGOs that you're working with. These NGOs, um, have their own way they handle issues or they handle public health issues, okay? So um, you might really have to convince them on what interventions are actually appropriate uh, to, to, uh, to implement and that you actually need to work together in implementing them. So that also requires negotiation. But also don't forget the fact that negotiation is actually part of our lives. Right? Any human being should have negotiation skills. Um, when you go to the market, you negotiate with the shopkeeper. When you get a new job, you negotiate for your salary. Uh, when you have worked for some time, you negotiate for your salary increment. Um, when, when you get a problem and you want to leave, you want a leave, you can negotiate for leave without pay. So negotiation is very, very important in our lives apart from uh, the fact that we use negotiation in a number of areas in public health. So in your negotiations, I've already highlighted that you talk to community members, you talk to policy makers who often are uh, government officials, you work or you will have negotiations with the health workers. They can be doctors, nurses, clinic officers, and others. You also work with the, the media. Uh, you can have negotiations with the television, uh, managers, radios, and the rest on a number of issues. Working with the national and international NGOs, okay? We have what we call subcontracting. When we have an international NGO subcontracting in uh, a national NGO to implement a project. So um, in the discussions, of course, there are areas of negotiations. 
areas on the on the objectives of the interventions, uh, areas on budgeting, areas on uh, the human resource. All these are areas for this uh, for negotiation uh, in some contracting. And then also you work together with the private sector. Okay, so you negotiate a lot with the private sector. Even if you are in the uh, humanitarian world, the suppliers of, uh, of, of the uh, medical equipment, uh, the drugs, uh, the construction, these are, these are actually private uh, people in the private sector. So you basically interact with them um, during the procurement, okay? So negotiation will also take place there. So what are the key concepts that you really need to know before we really go into the details of negotiation? Uh, we earlier on said that uh, there should be parties uh, for negotiations to take place. So often you will have two parties. Um, or you can have multiple parties. For example, uh, in the recently concluded conference on, uh, uh, on climate change, you had the, the government representatives. Um, so, so you have uh, over uh, uh, a thousand delegates, okay, coming together, uh, I think it was in Dubai to really discuss issues to do with, uh, uh, with climate change, okay? So for the declarations or agreements uh, that were reached, uh, of course, they involved the commitments, okay? To see that the governments can really commit resources to addressing the problem of climate change. But these are typically negotiations. How, mu how much will these governments uh, uh, commit to fighting this problem. So you can have a number of parties involved in negotiation. So those can be complex negotiations, okay? So that is parties, the people who are basically involved in the negotiations are the ones you are calling up parties. What, what are the issues that you're actually negotiating about? Okay, that is the, the element number two. What are the areas of disagreement or the, 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 the areas of negotiation? Okay, is it climate change? Is it about uh, collaborating and working together? Uh, what is that? What are the issues on the table? And then information, okay? information when you when when you have two parties negotiating with one another they, they will share information with one another but of course uh, the extent to which you share information is very important because it can be used as one of the tactics of negotiation how much do you reveal and when so another is one technique of negotiation. So uh, information is a, a very key concept. And then alternatives, okay? When, when, you, when you're having a negotiation, you have, uh, you have differing views and you want to reach a conclusion. So what are those differing views? So what are the options or what are the alternatives? And then communication, which is also another element. Um, information, which we have said is basically a commodity, one of the commodities of negotiation, is of course exchanged through proper communication channels. But you also need to note that the body language of verbal and nonverbal communication cues are very important in in understanding the dynamics of a negotiation process. So communication is very key. And then outcome is at the end of the negotiation, what do you get? Do you get an agreement? Do you have an MOU that has been signed? Do you have a contract that has been signed? 
this contract that has been signed, um, is it where you, ha you have both parties mutually agreeing? Or there is one party that is actually signing the agreement reluctantly? Or that both parties have made compromises? Or that there is actually no contract or no agreement reached the deadlock? Okay, that's when you don't have, when both parties have not reached uh, um, a point where they both agree. Interests. For someone to come to the negotiating table, it means that they have something that they want. There is a need that is driving them to the negotiation table. So what is that? You really need to know. Um, what is the interest of the other party in the negotiation? Okay. Um, what do they exactly desire as a need? Okay. Uh, what do they actually need? And then position. Okay. And um, there are some situations where the, the position of the party is actually known. Okay, they, 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 there is a, they, for example, if we talk about uh, formulating a policy on, uh, let us say, on allowing uh, school going children to go with contraceptives to schools. Okay, you allow boys to go with condoms to boarding schools without even asking the Catholics leaders you already you will know their standpoint you know their position you know that they will actually be against okay so that is position so where do where are the parties standing on that issue that is what you call a position okay uh, and then we move to power dynamics okay you need to know who has what kind of power okay um, if you're going to negotiate you need to know the power dynamics of an organization you're going to negotiate with if you're going to meet the the uh, for example you want to supply uh, let us say computers to a school and you're negotiating with the procurement officer and then perhaps you have not reached an agreement. If, if you know the power dynamics within the organization, you can decide to say, let me talk to the procurement manager. Okay, or let me talk to the executive director. Okay, this is basically to know that uh, uh, there are people who have more powers than others. Okay, power is derived from the position that you hold but also there is the power that you can have because of how you are related uh, to a prominent person, okay? Um, so you, you have people who have power virtue of their relationship with the boss, uh, and then you have those who have legitimate power. And then you have those who have power because of their level of education, okay? knowledge okay so you need to understand the power dynamics in negotiations so approaches to negotiation uh, you can go into a negotiation when you are very aggressive you want to take the biggest share that is uh, distributive okay you want to win, nothing else. And then you want integrative. When you're basically focusing on both of you winning, let us win together, win-win situation. And then you, have, you can go into a negotiation when you're using both approaches. You want to win and at the same time, you don't want the other party to really lose. So you're integrating both 
competitive and cooperative uh, approaches to negotiation. Okay. So you don't want to take it all uh, at the expense of the other party. Okay. You want to make sure that he, the other party can also win. But if your interest is to make sure that you take it and you take it all and then the other party loses, then that is uh, distributive bargaining. Okay. You want to take the larger part. Okay. So often this creates a scenario of clashing where you have one party winning and the other losing. Um, you will see this when the person is basically emphasizing their own desired outcomes, okay? That they're interested in their, what they want to get. They're not interested in what you could get or what you could lose. That's the other issue. So you will see them through um, many tactics that they will actually display. Uh, sometimes they do what you call bluffing, which is that they can even promise you something that they will not really do. It's a bluffing. And then sometimes they do what you call anchoring, which is that uh, they give you uh, they give you an offer which is an which is extreme, where uh, it is even very difficult for you to start negotiating. Okay. Um, for example, you go you go expecting, let us say, if it is about a procurement uh, negotiation, you go expecting to spend like twenty thousand dollars, let us say, and then the person aggressively or basically tells you that uh, they want they want something like seventy thousand US dollars. You see that that person is actually want to milk everything from you, okay? So that is the anchoring. They give you something that is extreme. Sometimes you actually just laugh and say, and, and you, just, you may want to withdraw from the negotiation, okay? And then they tend to give you ultimatums. They say, if you don't buy it, another person is going to actually take it, okay? They give you ultimatums, time pressure. And then they can use threats uh, to pressure you. So this is not basically something that you can use in negotiation, where you want, uh, where you're only focused on your interests, and then you're not focused on the other person's interests, uh, whether they even lose or not. Integrative negotiation is where you basically focus on the problem at hand and how you can solve it uh, to the mutual benefit, okay, of each of the parties involved in the negotiation. Now, um, in public health, you cannot win alone, okay? You cannot win alone. There is no public health problem that you can solve alone. I've never seen it, okay? So the thing of making sure that the other party loses and then for you gain does not really work. It is a traditional way of, of uh, doing things. And uh, that is what we call uh, zero sum games, okay? You, you, you have one party winning and the other party losing. That is zero sum games. You don't want uh, that to happen, okay? So you want a collaborative approach where you work together to create solutions that benefit everyone. So let's come to this concept called the best alternative to a negotiated agreement but um, you just need to know that uh, enter a negotiation when you know 
the limit, the extent to which you can actually compromise, the, the minimum extent to which you can compromise. Basically, this is to say that know when you can walk away. Okay? Know when you can walk away. Sometimes it is better for you not to enter into the agreement and just leave it all there together. Uh, because it will not be sustainable for you or it doesn't make any business sense. It is not logical. Okay, so for you to reach what we call the best alternative to a negotiated agreement is where there you can you actually have a situation where you can do best without the agreement. Hmm? What is the best thing that you can do without the agreement being reached? You need to know that point. It's one of the techniques of negotiation. That you go into a negotiation, if it is about sharing a percentage, you know that the moment that person tells me it is 30 percent to me, and then they take 70 percent, and you have calculated all options, and you have seen that beyond that you cannot really work. Um, these are financially sustainable. Look at the other options that you can have. If you have a better option than that, then don't enter that agreement. So you need to think about what, what if we don't reach an agreement, what options do I have? What is my best option? That is what you call the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. So what are the steps of negotiations? Of course, different resources will give you different uh, stages okay so here i'm having five um others other resources will start with what you call pre preparation pre preparation uh, uh and then here i'm having preparation you have opening uh argumentation concession making and then close closure is basically about uh, formalizing the agreement, uh, building commitment, and maintaining relationships. So each stage requires different tactics. Okay, if you're going to enter into a negotiation before you actually approach the party, you need to do your own groundwork. Okay, do some research, uh, develop what we have just explained. The best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Uh, identify what your goals are. So you have first to do, you need to do the groundwork, understand the power dynamics, understand their, their, their interests, uh, look at what questions or what arguments will they put across and then be prepared for them. So that is the preparation phase. Now, when you go uh, for this negotiation, you build the rapport, because basically, we are, humans are social animals. I'll always repeat this. You want to create a very good first impression. So, um, so that means if you're going to create a very good first impression, even your dress code is very important. How, your appearance is very, very vital. People will take you seriously or not seriously based on how you appear. Inevitably, that is how humans do. And then, of course, uh set the agenda for this negotiation and then exchange information remember we say that information is one of the weapons that you can use in the negotiation so you need to know the extent of the information that you can release how much information you're going to release the other party may not give you all the <laughs> all the information and then for you you throw everything about your sales, about, uh, about your, um, the, your budget, about uh, the, the, your donors, who, who are the people giving you, <laughs> giving you funds, okay? So be very cautious of how uh, the extent to which you provide this information. You don't want to provide information that can be used against you, okay, in the negotiation process. 
I mean, uh, the argumentation, this is when now you present and, and justify your positions, okay? Um, what, what you want to be done, what your stands are, you basically present a compelling argument on, on, uh, on the issue uh, on table. And then concessions. Of course, with this argumentation, you have people, both parties exchanging uh, ideas or arguments are being exchanged. Okay, so uh, for you to, to move closer to a common solution, you make concessions. Okay, um, there are some, some things that uh, your, the other party may have to give up on. And then there are other things that you also have to give up on. Those are concessions. And then uh, after that, if you have agreed on principle, then it's about formalizing the, uh, the agreement. If it is an MOU, if it is a contract, whatever it is. And then basically the documentation and then the, the issues to do with the optics. Uh, that is the photo moments and things like that. And then PR issues come in, okay? But uh, from that moment going forward, it is very important that you keep communicating, you build that commitment, and also maintain that positive relationship uh, between the two parties. In all these negotiations, it is very important for you to conduct yourself in the most responsible way possible. So ethical conduct is very important. Uh, be transparent, honest, and act in good faith, okay? Like I said, in public health, you can't work alone. So need to make sure that you are accommodating, uh, you can balance, uh, you can compromise. Uh, look at other people's perspectives and also accommodate their own their interests um, avoid the tactics that are not very good in negotiation uh, manipulation coercion that is using force and ethical tactics these are not very good so display uh, display professional and ethical manners during negotiation because the, the way you actually uh, carry yourself will reflect on the organization that you are representing in this negotiation. So what are the key things that you really need to master in your negotiation? Uh, communication is very important. Uh, so uh, communication is reflected in the different communication skills, your ability to listen attentively, uh, clear articulation of issues, Okay, the argumentation that we uh, talked about is very important. How do you present your arguments in a logical way? Uh, persuasive messaging, tailoring um, uh, your communication. Okay, assertive communication or is it aggressive communication style? Which one is much more proper? And then uh, empathy, team building, fostering collaboration and conflict resolution. These are also very important in negotiation. Uh, if you're going to look for solutions, solutions will come when you have an open mind, a mind that is going to be critically thinking about the situation at hand. You don't, you don't want to have a mind that is fixed on your own interest and not looking at the things that you can actually attain uh, better, okay? So there could be, you could actually be limiting yourself to good things. Um, I'm, I'm remembering one negotiation I was involved in. Uh, the person, the, the person I was negotiating with, was interested in the fact that, regardless of any other option, they should take the highest percentage in terms of profit. You get it. You lose it. You lose it. And and we we never agreed on that that negotiation we didn't have we had a, a deadlock okay it has to be beyond the percentage that you take it has to be beyond the fact that you want to be 
you want to be seen as the person in, in, in power, okay, or in control. It has to be more on um, what interests actually are sustainable for both parties, okay? So look for ways in which uh, both of you can win. Win-win situations are better. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in ways uh, where, where you want to portray power, where you want to, basically some negotiate, some people are, want to portray greed. <laughs> uh, there's another negotiation that I was involved in. Before I went into the details of, of, the, of the kind of collaboration we wanted to have, the first question, almost from the reception, uh, from each person that I moved to, the, each of if each office was asking me about how much we could give them, you get it. So the, the whole thing was about money, 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 money. Until I reached the, the topmost person, and still it was the same thing: money, 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 money. Club. Okay, it kills. It kills the motive, or uh, it just shows that basically the organization is interested in money. Yet it is not. It shouldn't be the case. Okay, so be um, be a person who can really adjust, uh, who can look at things in a different way, uh, depending on the information that has been provided to you. So adjust the tactics depending on the situation, depending on who you're dealing with, and also be in control such that you minimize situations where you're very you're not very certain. Okay. So basically, if you look at those competences, uh, you really see what a good negotiator should have in terms of skills. Uh, know how to talk to people. Interpersonal communication skills are very important. Uh, have the skills of uh, visualizing possible gains and not losses. How, and, and this takes me back to those examples that I've provided. Uh, apart from the monetary value that you can get, what other values can you get from a collaboration if you are to have one? Okay, so don't be one-minded, uh, 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 one-sided, looking at one side of the coin without looking at the other. Okay? And think about the strategy that you will use and, the, and, 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 and the, choose the most appropriate strategy to use in a given situation. Remember, we have looked at the different strategies uh, that you can really employ uh, in negotiations. Okay, uh, be in position to read what the other party's interests are. Okay, so um, you need to have those skills. Be flexible and sincere. That is related to being transparent. Okay, and avoid bluffing, which is said is the basically saying that I, uh, I can do this and then you will not do it, okay? I remember in one of the negotiations I also had, um, the, 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 the person said, uh, please make sure that you get this document uh, from relevant authorities and after that we will sign uh, an agreement. I ran around, <laughs> spent money, got these documents, brought them and the person said no. We are not going to work with you. So that is not a sincere person, okay? That person is not very transparent. So make sure that in negotiations, you are very sincere and transparent. So some of the things I've already actually outlined there, what are the, the, thing, the things that you really need to know uh, when going for a negotiation. I've talked about uh, interpersonal, um, uh, interpersonal skills are very important. Communication is very important. Knowing your interests, do your your your, your homework very well. Uh, a lot of things. I will also go through some of them that have not really hinted on here. Um, argument. Uh, okay, let's start from the first point. Seek the needs and interests, not just stating the demands. Okay, it goes back to the other example. Don't be one-dimensional, okay? Broaden, broaden your perspective. Look at the actual issues on table, okay? Point number two, uh, which is that understand the other party's perspective. What are their interests? 
and build rapport. Okay, that is very important. If you don't understand um, what the other party is saying, you can ask them questions, preferably open-ended questions. It could be very important. Um, frame the proposals in a positive way, okay? Uh, this, this also goes back to um, policy making, where we said that how you frame a problem will determine whether people will actually be interested in your issues or not. Okay, so if you approach someone who you are basically negotiating with or having a discussion with, um, if you state the, the, the proposal in a way that benefits them, they will get interested in what you're talking about, okay? But if you state it in a way that basically reflects that you're the one who is going to benefit, or if you, pro you, you make a proposal that you don't really point out how they are going to benefit, you have, you have challenges. So know how to frame the problems or the proposals in a proper way, okay? Offer to give up less valuable things to gain um, on more important things. Okay, this is about concession. Okay, if sometimes, uh, and this, I use this example a lot. You can start an organization. Uh, let us say it is a, uh, it is a, a commercial organization, and you are the majority shareholder. Okay, and the, the, the organization is actually moving in the right direction, but you don't have enough funds to scale up, to, to expand your business. So when someone can come with, with the funds and may want shares, okay? But for, for you, if you want to retain your, your shares such that you're in control of the business, but when you look at it in the other way, what is the emphasis of having more shares when you are getting little out of it? Because you can have the shares of 5% in terms of shares, but what you're getting is very big, okay? That you can also have 90 shares, 90% uh, shares, but you have less value, All right, okay? You're not getting a lot from it, okay? So you really need to know that some, you really need to, to know how to, to, to let some, small things go and get bigger things. That is the point there, okay? So know what to concede and get. Sometimes you can give in a cow, uh, you can give him, give in a goat, and then they give you a cow. You get it. So you really need to know to how to play those cards. Be assertive and not aggressive, okay? Don't be aggressive. Uh, don't be too thirsty in negotiations. And, and yeah, you, really, you can state your point without being extremely aggressive. Maintain ethical conduct, which we have already explained. Negotiation styles, okay? Um, some of these we have already actually looked at. It's just the ones that really change. We talked about distributing, where you want to win, which is basically competing. I want to win and you should lose, okay? And then you have a situation where you want, you don't want everyone to really uh, lose, okay? So you are basically accommodating. This is the opposite of competing. And then you have collaborating where you, you want a win-win situation. You win, I win, that is collaborating. And then avoiding is where you avoid the discussions about the issues at hand. So you are not really very interested. So it is, you, you don't gain, I don't gain. And then compromise, okay? Someone wins, but not 100%. The other person can, can lose, but not 100%. So it is a partial win, a partial loss for both parties. It's based on fairness and rationality. So we have those people who use what we call hardball tactics in negotiations. Um, they, are, they extremely go hard in the negotiation. 
okay? You may not believe it advisable to use these tactics, which are very extreme of that nature. Uh, so things like saying, if you don't sign the agreement by Friday, it is gone. Don't come back here. It's pressurizing people, that is ultimatums. And they threaten you that if you don't sign it, we shall we can take you to court or we can withdraw this. Okay, we can withdraw the funds that we have been giving you. Okay, and then there are also people who make extreme demands. Okay, they demand a lot from you, and you may actually see that it is not sustainable for you to, to continue with if that demand is to be implemented. I mean, some people use psychological tactics. They really, they can attack your personality at the hominem, if you remember that, okay? Uh, some people just walk away. Some people just keep quiet. Uh, they don't really tell you what their stand is. Okay, that's not a good tactic in negotiation. Uh, stonewalling, which you also said is basically turning, becoming silent about issues. And then uh, we have what we call bad pop, good cop, bad cop. Um, and I'll put the word uh, CSI. I don't know if you have, we, I have some, uh, if there's someone who watches those CSI um, uh, TV shows on, on, on DSTV. Anyone here? Anyone who watches not CSI? really. Mm -hmm. So C CSI is a, 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 a TV show really. which are about uh, criminals. Oh, it is basically it stands for uh, uh, crime scene investigation. They are they are very educative. I used to watch them. Uh, they are engaging, so they, yeah. So I, I, I used to watch them a lot. So basically what uh, what happens in these CSI uh, TV shows or movies or movie series is that someone commits a crime, they are, those, you know, that person is investigated and is arrested and is taken for interrogation. So during the interrogation, there is one bad cop the bad cop is that police pass, policeman or police person who comes and really grills and threatens and says, if you don't tell us, we shall do this and starts banging things. And then the good cop will come. Okay? So this bad police pa policeman goes out and excuses himself out for a minute and then the good policeman comes in and then says, you see, you really need to tell me because if this guy comes when you have not really told me, you're going to face it wrath. And then the, the suspect will actually say how they were involved in the crime, okay? So that is what happens uh, with that kind of negotiation. So the criminal ends up saying um, what they had refused to say initially, okay? So that is the, that tactic. It is a hard one to, to really implement. Another concept that I want to introduce very fast is interdependence. And I think I've explained this several times. In public health, we work with one another to achieve our objectives, okay? If we know that in our mind, then it is going to be very easy for us to have negotiations because we, we have, we are, we have shared objectives. Our, our outcomes are connected, usually at all outcomes. And the benefits are about improving population health. So if we know these negotiations in public health should not be very difficult. For example, negotiating with the community and the government officials over how a vaccination campaign will be carried out. You can see that it is, whether it is the organization, whether it is the community, whether it is the government officials, their interests is the one that 
the vaccination should happen such that disease outbreaks are prevented. Okay, so that is interdependence. If we know that, it is very, very vital negotiation. And then the positions which I've explained uh, that uh, you really need to know the positions of the interested parties in the concession and the concessions that you can make. The key concepts here that now you have to really know is that often the initial offense or in the initial positions are inflated such that uh, there is room for negotiation okay and the concessions so you really need to know that and then um, make concessions uh, that are appropriate Okay, there's another concept that we have not really looked at about hard and the soft bargaining. With soft bargaining, you will have that person agreeing on almost everything. Okay, so that person makes a lot of concessions. The concessions can be made that they should be calculated, and then understanding your best alternative to negotiated agreement is very key. So some negotiations can result in two agreements, others not, depending on a number of factors. Some of them you already know in terms of communication, in terms of uh, uh, whether people are rigid, whether they are willing to listen and, and understand the other party's interests, a lot of things which I will not really go into now. The key thing is that my last words for you about negotiation, Negotiation is a skill that you learn continuously. And the, for me, I, I learned um, negotiation skills through reflection, okay? When you, when you go and negotiate, you come back and think about how you negotiated, and then you learn out of it. So negotiation is a long life learning uh, uh, competence that you really need to look at. Keep your reputation, okay? Man, no, know that if you deceive people, if you lie, if you, you are not transparent, it will come back and bite. So think about the reputation that you have in this negotiation. So don't use what we call under.